ANOVA. ANOVA, which means analysis of variance, is used to test for differences between the means of more than two groups and, and can be used in designs with more than one independent variable. So it means it can also be used with more than one independent variable, but for the, this syllabus of our OP2601, we only work with one independent variable. The family wise error rate is the probability of rejecting at least one now hypothesis when it is true uh, in a set of family comparison. So remember when we're doing decision errors, they also apply to the ANOVA. So the family so ANOVA it will be doing groups. So those groups are sometimes called families or sets or whatever you want to depending with the test of your terminology. In ANOVA te terminology, variance is renamed as mean squares. So when you're doing because remember we are doing analysis of variance. So there will be a, a group of variances which are then combined into one variance which is called mean squares. Variance is renamed mean squares represented by this symbol MSE. Then the numerator in the variance formula is called the sum of squares. And the denominator is called the degrees of freedom. So uh, this was just to illustrate mean squares, sum of squares, degrees of freedom. Let's move on. Error variance is random or unexplained variance between the means of samples drawn from the same population. So when we are talking of error variance, it's, it's, it's that one which you cannot explain. But systematic variance is variance in a set of scores that we can explain in terms of independent variable. So systematic variable, variance I mean, is the one which can be explained in terms of the independent variable. The aim of computing ANOVA is to determine whether there is a systematic variance present. So you are just determining if there is a systematic variance present. If there is a systematic variance present in our data set, we have a significant effect. So ANOVA just detects whether there is a systematic variance. We don't know the magnitude of the systematic variance, but just determine whether it's there or not. So it's a, a yes or a no uh, answer without any specific figure. However, we can never identify and measure pure systematic variance. The difference between group means will always be influenced by random or error variance in addition to systematic variance. So we, so the error that we get is to be a combination of systematic variance and random error. So that's why we can never get pure systematic variance. There's always error due to random uh, variance. So let's move on. These are the formulas for ANOVA formulas. So you should know that you, when you are given like three groups of data, you know that you, your total, your big N will be the summation of those symbol total, symbol sizes. Then your X bar, big mean will be your mean of your means. So it means you add up the means and divide by three to get your uh, another mean. Then the SS total is given by this formula. Remember, this n is equal to the sum of the. So I think we are already familiar with these symbols. Then the degrees of freedom for the total is n minus one. Then for SS group, remember these are sum of squares. SS group is equal to n. n is the number. of items in each sample. Then DF groups is equals to K minus one. So K is the number of groups. So if there are three groups, you say three minus one, then you get two. Then your 
S S era is equal to S S total minus S S group. Then your degrees of freedom of error is k n minus 1 in brackets like this. So this is your group and this is your number of items or example size. Where n is the number of test subjects in a group. So your mean square error is SSE over DFE. Your mean square group is SSG over DF. Then you, the ANOVA f variable for the s distribution is ms group divided by ms error so these are the formulas which we apply when you are doing analysis of variance so these formulas they are given in your exam formulas and uh, so, uh, so you don't necessarily need to know them by head so let's do an example to clarify whether we or understand what you mean here so before we go to the example you should know that whenever you solve your questions using these uh, when you determine these values you should always summarize them in a table so there's a source tf tss ms and f and this will be the group and this will be the error then the total so remember so you shall so this one will be saying this value plus this one to get the total so this one and this one if you add them then you get your total so this will be your ss total and this will be a gf total this will be a df error df group ss group ss error ms group ms error and ms total and this will be your f distribution value which is a division between MS group minus development in this area, remember? This we have covered. So let's move on to an example. A researcher draws a random sample of 12 students. So we are taking a random sample of 12 students and divide these samples uh, randomly into three equal. So which means each group has got four, four, four. So she then subjects each group to a different level of sleep deprivation and measures the intellectual function of each student on a 10 point scale. A high score indicates high intellectual functioning, the degree of sleep deprivation are as follows. So this is little, mild, and so these are the, the, the items which are Which are under so does the degree of sleep deprivation uh, appear to affect level of intellectual functioning? Calculate the appropriate uh, conduct the appropriate analysis and report relevant statistics. Uh, assume that alpha is equal to zero point zero zero five. So now we already know that this is an ANOVA because it's analysis. Of variances so we want to see how they vary when you use different little deprivation mild deprivation severe deprivation so now let's move on and calculate the solution so the first step is to state your hypothesis remember we have three symbols so we are assuming that the means from each symbol are equal then the alternative we are assuming that they are not equal so for you to get the n total which is the uh, for the, the total population sample population is the groups we add the group so we already know that there are four equal groups so we just add them and get hope then your x bar it means we are just summing the total is in those groups. So this is your x1, which is your first group. Uh, so we can say this is um, little, mild, and severe, as you can see from these uh, 8674, 8674, and 5764, 5764. So if you 
these ones, if you add them, you get 25. So this is your x1, summation of x1. So if you square them, h squared, 64, 6 squared, 36, and you do it to the end, then you get your x, summation of x1, uh, x1 squared. Then this is your summation of x2. This is your summation of x2 squared. x2 squared is summation of x3. Summation of x3 squared. So this the, the the way you did on the first set is the way you do on the this and this one. So like five squared is twenty five. Then you sum them up, get one twenty six. And this one you sum them up, you get one twenty three. And the squares of x three squared is seven squared is forty nine. Then you continue to do it. Then you sum them to get your summation of x three squared. So once you do that, you can now determine your x bar 1. So x bar 1 is summation of x, summation of x1 divided by n1, which is summation of uh, x1 is 25, 25 divided by number of subjects. So 25 divided by 4 you get 6.25. So you do the same for x bar 2 and x bar 3. So just to, I'm not going to calculate, I'm just going to give you the formula so that you, you can follow up. So m2 so you can do also for x bar 3. So for you to get the x bar, the bigger one, you add them. Then you divide, you may add the group means and you divide by 3. Number of groups is 3. So these are the x bar 1, x bar 2, x bar 3. Add them up and you get your overall mean which is 5.83 so once you do that you move on to the other formulas so ss total you know is equal to this formula so it means you have already calculated these ones so for you to so remember this formula Summation of x squared. Remember there are three three groups. So it's summation of x one plus summation of x uh, two. Uh, x two then plus summation of x three. So this is your that's how we get to so this one corresponds to this, this one to this, this one to this. That's how, that's how we get this one. So this one now, yeah, say inside, this one, inside. Summation of x. I remember these are squared. Squared, summation of x1 squared plus summation of x2 squared, summation of x3 squared. So you get these ones, it's for this one. Then for the summation of x, it's summation of x1 plus summation of x2. Uh, Plus summation of x3. x3. So this one goes from the this, this one goes from the right, this one goes from the this. Then, so this one, 
remember the total summation here you square it so which means this is sum of these ones you square them then you get your ss total so your gf total is n minus 1 remember n is 12 from the previous slide then you get your gf total is 11 then your ss group you say n summation of this the the group means minus the symbol mean squared. So what we are basically saying this expression you can just write it as uh, remember this is the number of items in the group. So the groups are divided into four. So it's your n is four here four item in each group. Then your this one uh, So basically, what you're doing is summing the difference between the means, between the group mean minus the sample mean. So, so for group mean one, so it's x bar one, x bar one minus x bar plus remember some bracket and x bar two minus x bar the big x bar so plus x uh, bar three uh, three Minus the big x bar for the same one. So that's what the symbol means. So which means your x bar one. That's remember x bar one. This one. So this x bar one. Minus the big X and this X bar two minus X bar this X bar three X bar three. So remember, these ones are squared. I forgot to put squared. If you miss the squared, you get the wrong answer. So that's what we are saying here. So you get your 6.25 minus 5.83 or in squared. So remember, all of these are multiplied by 4. There is a square bracket here. Once you simplify the middle part, then you multiply it by 4. So you're supposed to, if you do your calculation correct, you're supposed to get 1.167. Then for your GF group, it's K minus 1, which is close to 3 minus 1. You must remember there are three groups, mild, uh, there's li uh, little mild and severe. Then you get your degrees of freedom, GF group is 2. Then your SS error is your SS total minus SS group. So SS total minus SS group, which is 21.667 minus 1.67, to get 20.5. Then your GF error is K, N minus 1. It's close to K is the group. Now three groups. Number of items in the group is 4. So if you simplify it, you get GF error is 9. Then your MSE is close to SSE divided by DFE, which is your GSSE, this one, divided by DFE is 9. So you get your 2.28. Then you get your M, MS group divided by SSG is supposed to MS group is supposed to SSG divided by DFG. So your SS group is this one, which is corresponding divided by 2 over to TF group. So you get 0 0.58. 
So once you get these figures, now you can calculate your F by just dividing MS good value MS area. So you get your 0 0.2 half. So uh, some prefer not to round all the way, but me I'm rounding. So sometimes if you don't round, you I think you get 0 0.26. 0 0.25 is too fine. So let's move on to the summary table. So this is your source uh, DF, SS, MS, and F. So your group error, then your total. So this is your DF, DF group, which corresponds to two year DF group is two. DF error is nine. You can see DF error nine. So you continue to fill up the so if you do them well, they are supposed to correspond. So your DF total, you can see it, that uh, from this previous one, DF total is 11. So mm -hmm. if you did them well, they are supposed to give you things which are in a corresponding manner. So once you do that, you, you have your critical value. Remember, critical value from the F distribution for the ANOVA. You know that you are doing it a significant level of 0 0.05. And remember from what we gave you, this is your DF group and DF error. So if you plug, if you calculate or solve this critical value using your F tables, you are supposed to get 4.26. So let's illustrate how you do it. So from your F values, uh, at a significant level of 0 0.05. So remember, you must make sure you are doing it at 0 0.05. So this is your DF group on the, on the top part, the horizontal part. So this is DF group, DF group. And this is your DF error. DF error. So DF group 2 and DF error 9, so they correspond to 4.26. So this is your critical value. So accept H0 at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and conclude that there is no significant difference between the means of the three groups. So you, you can see that your Test statistics your F was 0. Point. So it's me, I prefer you guys, if you are doing this question, draw this table or you know, this graph. So you should know that this is your test statistics, critical value 4.26. And this is the rejection region. So, but we know that your F, our test statistics, so this is CV. Critical value, the test statistic is 0. Point. So it's somewhere maybe here. So you know that you're accepting it. That's why you accept it. So always I uh, advise you to draw this graph. It will help you not to make errors when you're making your decision. So accept H0 at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and conclude that there is no significant difference between the means of the three groups. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions concerning this section or you need any further information, call us on. Call us now on 074-920-9697. So the last section will be section 7, exam preparation. So these ones, are, it's a very good uh, section for you to be part of. It is called exam tips, how to use your calculator, how to solve your questions, various shortcuts, and uh, ways to tackle your, the exam in case you run out of time, and uh, a lot of stuff. So I hope to meet you in the exam prep section. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye-bye.